Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Does read position matter? Literally, does it matter if the read is a little over the edge of the mouthpiece, a little under, a little to the left, to the right? Well, I honestly don't know. So in this video, I'm gonna test a bunch of different ways and we're gonna find out together. Right before I jump into that comparison test, I have an exciting announcement. Next Wednesday, February 28th, I am launching once again, my saxophone success workshop. That's right, it's a three part completely free workshop going live February 28th, March 1st, and March 3rd. Each part will be a video lesson with corresponding PDFs, and each one will focus on something different. The first one on February 28th is all about the most important aspect of playing saxophone, and that is your tone. How do you actually get a good sound on the saxophone? Do you just randomly play some exercises and hope for the best? Do you think in your head what you should sound like? In that masterclass, I'm gonna teach you exactly what I think is best to get a good sound on the saxophone, and the greatest thing about this is that, once again, it's completely free, but also it's going to simplify your practicing. I know how confusing it could be to learn saxophone, especially if you're trying to learn online with a bunch of different things. This is going to be focused and you will be more efficient with your practicing after this. In the second workshop video, I talk about technique. That's right, what are some actual exercises that will increase your technique on the saxophone? Well, I'm gonna show you those in the second video. And finally, in the third workshop video going live Sunday, March 3rd, I have the extra stuff, the extended techniques. That's right, Altissimo. I give you my complete Altissimo fingering guide for both alto and tenor. I also give you tips and tricks on how I've gone about practicing Altissimo, and I know it will be a game changer for you if you've had trouble playing Altissimo. Along with Altissimo, I go over things like vibrato, growling, bends, scoops, all those other extra techniques, even overtones, undertones, many different ideas that I think will be incredible for you when learning those extra techniques. I hope to see you in that free workshop series. And the only thing you have to do to be signed up to get it is go to davepollock.com slash SSC. I'm also gonna put that link in the top of the description below and also in the pinned comment. See you Wednesday at the Saxophone Success Workshop. All right, whenever you were first taught how to put the reed on the mouthpiece, literally putting the reed on there then attaching it with the ligature, you were probably told to maybe look from the front or look from the side or the top to line it up perfectly. And you know, if you look at the flat part, the table of the mouthpiece, you'll see that it's shaped like a reed. So you should line it up there as well. Sometimes you might be in a rush though and you put a little too high or a little too low or left or right. And it might affect the sound, it might not, it might be better. What actually happens when you do that and you actually try each of the ways and see how it works? Well, that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna have five different examples. I'm gonna have the reed perfectly lined up to the tip of the mouthpiece. Then I'm gonna have it above, below, left, and right. The only thing though, I'm not gonna tell you on each of the takes which one it is, and I'm gonna do them in a random order. What I want you to do is listen, see which one sounds best, sounds worst, or rank them if you want, and also which sound do you like the most, or do they all sound the same? Then I'm gonna play the same recordings back again, but that time I'm gonna put in the bottom left corner of the screen which one it is. Was the read too high on the mouthpiece? Was it too low, too far to the left, too far to the right, or dead? On. I'm actually really curious about this because I'll tell you at the end, but I actually don't put my reed exactly to the tip of the mouthpiece. I do something different. I always have, but now I'm actually curious to see if it makes a difference or why I've been doing it, but I just kind of always do it in this one way. And I'm curious to see if you know which way that is. So without any further ado, here are the playing examples. I will just number them one, two, three, four, and five, and I'll keep number one consistent throughout, number two consistent, so you can kind of guess which number corresponds with which lining up of the read. Here we go. Thank you. 
All right, before I talk about kind of what I felt when I was playing those different positions of the read, I just have to say, no, this isn't that important and it's not that groundbreaking. Oh my God, why'd you do this comparison? It's so stupid. Yeah, it's kind of stupid, but people compare the most random things online. So I figured, you know, why not try this? Because like I said in the beginning, I actually don't keep my read flat against the edge there. And I'll talk about that in a second. People talk about, you know, what kind of ligature is more free blowing and what gives a darker sound? And what about the lacquer? And what about the heavy mass screw? By the way, I did a re-lacquer versus original lacquer Mark VI video. And I also did a heaviest mass screw. So check those videos out if you have it. But I just figured I would try this out because it's free to try out. If you already have a read, all you have to do is move it around. By the way, I was playing the Boston Sack Shop three and a half read silver box, which I absolutely love with the Boston Sack Shop M series, size eight tip opening mouthpiece with the Boston Sack Shop superlative ligature, the brass two screw ligature. So now let's get to the results, if you will. If you know anything about me and my teaching and how I kind of think about playing saxophone and gear, for me, the most important thing is how you feel as the player with the gear. What I mean is like, do you feel comfortable when you're playing the saxophone in this case? Are you able to just get those ideas out freely with nothing in between? There should be no thought of the gear when you're playing. If you think about the gear, that means it's probably getting in the way and you're compensating in some way, in which case you might need to switch something up and so it's a little more comfortable for you. But really that's how I feel about gear. It should disappear when you're playing. You should be able to go from here to out of the instrument with nothing in between. So find the most comfortable setup for you. With that being said, there was one read position that felt way more comfortable to me than all the other ones. And that's really because I always keep my read like that. And that is with the read stuck above the tip of the mouthpiece a little bit. That's right, whenever I set up normally, I don't put the reed right to the tip of the mouthpiece. I actually stick the reed up a little bit. And if you look at it from a top down view, you can see the reed sticking out. I know some people have said, you know, notice it before and they said to me that, what are you doing there? Is that a mistake? No, that's just the way I like it. I'm not sure why. Once again, gear to me should just disappear. And I noticed when I did that, the articulation to me is cleaner. I feel like I get a fatter sound. I feel like I can blow more air and get a nice big full sound. And also when I play softer, it doesn't just get airy. So for me, for whatever reason, personally, I have the reed sticking past the tip of the mouthpiece a little bit. Second place for me was probably even with the tip opening because it's still lined up straight, but it was just a little bit more down. So that didn't feel nearly as good as, you know, sticking over the edge, but it felt you know, a little worse, but it was okay. And then really tied for all the others was left, right, and lower. To me, they just felt terrible to play. I feel like I couldn't play with a big, rich sound. I feel like every time I got soft, the sound wanted to stop and it, it was just really airy. I couldn't articulate properly. And you probably heard that in those recordings. I didn't listen back to them yet, by the way. I'm just giving you my thoughts on how I felt when I was playing them. But really, they were all kind of tied. When it was left, it felt weird. When it was right, it felt weird. When it was down, it felt really weird. Honestly, down might have been the worst feeling to me because I'm so used to having it way far up, maybe. I don't know. But your mileage may vary with this. This is a really cheap and easy test to do for yourself. And you might find something out about this and you might switch your read around a little bit. One funny thing about this is that sometimes I'm rushing so much to get the read on the mouthpiece. I'll slap it on there and I'll start tightening it down. I won't even really pay attention. And then I go to play the first note and I'm like, oh my God, this read sucks. And then I look down and the reads <laughs> crooked or something. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a professional. But <laughs> if you've ever done that, make sure the read is where you want it. And how do you know where you want it? Well, maybe do this test. It doesn't take long. Put the read up, down, centered, left, right. Figure out what you like the best and go with that. There is no right answer here. Just like there's no right size of mouthpiece for you or right size read for you. That's like saying you have to wear the right size shoes for Michael Jordan might be different than you. Hope this video was fun for you and I hope you got a little something out of it. If nothing else, you see the difference when you move the read around a little bit and how it can affect your sound and maybe this will help you try it out for yourself so you can find the best position for you. Don't forget to go down in the description below or the pinned comment, or just go to davepollock.com SSC to sign up completely free for my saxophone success workshop starting next Wednesday, February 28th. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you at the workshop.